Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Horror Room. I'm Travis Bruce, and today we're doing another Indie Horror Spotlight. I have with us today Indie Horror Director Matt Peters, and he has two amazing new Indie Horror movies that, that's in the works. One is called Big Brood, and the other one is called Graveyard Shark. Matt, welcome to the Horror Room. Thank you for having me. Pleasure to have you, man. Pleasure to have you. So, first of all, tell us a little bit about Graveyard Shark. I've, I've seen some of the pictures on Facebook. It looks amazing yeah uh, it's kind of a, a wild idea it's uh, about a humanoid shark creature that haunts a, a graveyard and it's named graveyard shark and it's kind of a weird almost scooby-doo kind of mystery that people have to kind of find out what's really going on and uh it's definitely like a wild wild ride um it's definitely a creature feature we built a from the ground up, a whole humanoid shark suit. He's big, he's muscular, he's scary, loads of teeth, uh, he's a hammerhead. Uh, and we're trying to do everything with it practical. So we have a lot of practical effects, a lot of blood, a lot of gore. Um, everything you see is real. We have no, uh, no digital effects, anything like that. So we're trying to do everything as possible on screen and it's coming out really well. We just uh, did an Indiegogo for it recently to raise enough funds to finish off the ending um because that's what's left we have the, the the epic ending which we have some really cool things planned i don't want to give away too much but it is a huge battle scene and we want to do it justice awesome now now how did you get inspiration to come up with give your shark um it kind of started off as a joke um <laughs> We were we were just talking, uh, me and uh, a few of my other film people. We work on films together. Um, we were just talking about kind of ideas. We keep seeing people doing these weird trends of different type of shark things, and we were just tossing out weird shark names. And someone said graveyard shark, and it kind of stuck as we started making weird songs about it. And then we kind of spiraled from there. And I, I wrote this script that is extremely humorous and funny and i think it's a definitely unique take on this whole shark exploitation uh genre that is now pretty popular it is i mean and i, I, I now some of them are fun to watch and some, some of them are bad bad like i yeah. saw um stephen king's shark in the corn that was not a, one of my favorites but like some of them are humorous and there there's some fun in them yeah and and you're definitely adding a new aspect to the shark or theme because, I mean, this shark, he is, like you said, he's muscular. He looks yeah. almost like a super villain. Yeah, I, we kind of inspired him by street sharks a little bit. Um, that, Love, yes. So, yeah, so we kind of went that route. Um, like, we kind of work with our budgets and constraints. Like, doing an actual, actual shark, I feel, would have cost money, or you had to go, like, the really bad CGI route, and we didn't want to do that. So we kind of figured out what we could with our budget, and we created this whole soup and this whole creature and kind of built the backstory around that and uh, what we could do in telling a story with that creature and it's very um so the, the, the very the film is very self-aware uh the characters act serious and they believe everything's happening but their situations they're in are very very silly in general i think and i think yeah. it's extremely entertaining that way now, who's responsible for designing this? I mean, making the suit and putting that together? Yeah, uh, well, I came up the uh, uh, initial concept. Um, we kind of found this really cool muscular bodysuit, and I found a, another talented artist in this area, uh, and he was able to kind of take that and paint it and kind of make it our own and give it that whole sharky vibe to it. And I mean, I think it came out pretty cool. So we're pretty happy with it. Now, while you were making this, I hope it's not giving anything away, but when you were making this movie and even come up the initial concept, were you given it a opening for a sequel or did you want it to be? So we kind of thought that the idea would kind of <laughs> lend itself <laughs> to a sequel, the, the, just the, the concept and the character alone. So there's there's always a possibility of doing extra things and doing more with it and kind of let it spin off in its own thing. We wanted to go that direction. Okay. All right. So and you have another movie. You guys are busy. You also had Big Brood. Tell us a little bit about Big Brood. Uh, we just premiered that in October, 
and it's out now and soon to be on some streaming platforms in the beginning of January. Uh, Big Brood is a alien creature film. Uh, it's kind of a sort of a, a romantic comedy start that kind of meets Invasion of the Body Snatchers in a way. Um, it's about this guy who wants to ask this girl's hand in marriage, but he has to kind of win his her father's approval and his, her father is very disapproving uh, he hates adam for many reasons and he kind of goes on a quest to try to get his respect while an alien crash lands and kind of interrupts all their plans as people start getting taken over by the alien and the aliens out searching for a perfect host which happens to be his girlfriend wow so i mean this is a way for him to win her back this is that yeah hero story Definitely has a, a hero story in there, correct? So, I mean, I mean, so you, you you've been a horror fan all your life. Who are some horror directors that you got an inspiration from? Uh, I would say John Carpenter is my favorite all time. Oh, uh, you're a Thing fan, right? I absolutely love Thing, but I love other things he's done. Like my favorite movie of all time is Big Trouble in Little China, and I think I found I personally get more inspiration from those type of movies than horror stuff. Now, now, um, Big Big Trouble in Little China. It's it's a movie that doesn't get as a cult following, but it doesn't get the love that it, just, it absolutely deserves. Oh, it's ahead of its time for sure. Like, it has this amazing story. It has amazing setting, characters, and it's a different way to tell that story. Like, the hero is not your typical hero, and he kind of doesn't want to be a hero. And I think that's what makes it really good and entertaining. It's it's definitely different than what people were doing at that time. And I absolutely love it. And and I mean, because yeah, it was interesting to throw a character that, like you said, doesn't want to be a hero who doesn't have that fit that hero mold. Yeah. And he's forced to be. I mean, John Carpenter has made a lot of, I mean, of course, people know Halloween. Yeah, John and the thing, but John Carpenter has made a lot of gems that don't get the respect that they should. Oh, I agree, thousand percent. Legend. Oh, absolute legend. Now I love. Um, I don't know if you've seen it. Um, Ghost of Mars. Oh yeah, I yeah. love that one, and that one does. That one gets a lot of shit. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I thought it was a really fun film. Like, you know, I haven't seen it in years. Uh, mm -hmm. I've always liked the Escape from the Escape from LA and the Escape from New York series a lot better, of course, but mm -hmm. it definitely had the same similar vibes to it. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah, and, and I think that was Jason Statham's first movie, like big name movie too. Goes to Mars. Could be. All right, so you got right now. So you got Big Brood, and it's mm -hmm. coming out on streaming services soon. So between Big Brood and Graveyard Shark. What have some, as a filmmaker, what are some things that you've learned between the two movies? You know, something you're like, oh man, that worked out great. I would like to carry that over to Graveyard Shark. And what's one thing you're like, I wish I, I wish I did this a little bit better. Um, I think uh, from Big Brood to Graveyard Shark, uh, Big Brood, because I mean, we work with very much smaller budgets and, uh, we lied a lot in comedy in Big Brood, and I think that worked off really well. Other reviews seem to really enjoy the comedy aspects of the movie, and that's something we brought a lot more into going into Graveyard Shark, leaning on the comedy end of the horror spectrum. And that's something I think was a good learning experience, uh, expanding in that area of it. Um, when it comes to things that I learned, I would say um, definitely uh, casting the right people for the right parts. I, I think that's something that we keep always improving and finding new ways to find people who are able to get out there and help express and share what we do and have that same love that we're bringing in. Now, is that a challenge as an indie filmmaker? Because, like, you know, it, it's to find the right actors and actresses because i mean i talked to a lot of um, some indie filmmakers and it's whoever's available yeah so i mean we're we're where i am um there's a, a lot of extremely talented people in a very underserved area um i'm in upstate new york and there's okay. not a lot of acting opportunities out there 
Um, so we do have a really good selection, but at the same time, it's, uh, I don't feel it's, it's tough because you want people who do have some sort of name value and stuff like that to help bring eyes to the picture process. And then with smaller budgets, it's hard to get those type of people involved. Um, all the actors in our movies are paid and stuff like that, but it's just not, we don't have enough to pay, I think, what large people require to, you know, bring in like a, a good set name to, to bring the eyes and attentions to the projects. Yeah, because I mean, even as a horror fan, you know, character development and liking the characters and it's something that's definitely important. Like you have yeah. to kind of connect with the characters. And that's something that may not been important in the early 80s, but like over time, horror fans tastes have a little bit matured a little bit. Oh, yeah, I definitely agree. Yeah. Um, getting the right people for the right part is always very important. And I think that's one of the first steps after having like an extremely good script is casting the right people, especially when you're dealing with low budget films. You want people who are going to be extremely reliable on time, uh, know their stuff, because if they know their stuff, it's cheaper. You're not going to spend as much time shooting and stuff like that. So you, you go, got to you gotta find a good solid base there. Now, and while you're in the process of uh, making Baby or Shark right now, is there one thing that you're leaving out of the movie that you don't have to tell me what it is, but is there like one thing you want it in the movie and you're like, damn, uh, for whatever reason, I'm not able to put it in there? Um, no, uh, actually, uh, it is exactly the vision of the film that I wanted. Um, it, like I said, it helps when you have like a budget in, in mind. Uh, when writing it and we came to we found out we didn't have enough money luckily we did the indiegogo to raise enough money for the ending so we don't have to cut anything out that's the that's the good thing we just we have enough to go through and not cut anything out that's awesome yeah, yeah. that's absolutely awesome all right man so i'm, I'm gonna shoot, shoot to to the fun part of the interview so as you know this is a horror channel i'm gonna ask you three fun horror questions you ready sure all right what is one horror movie that you think is completely underrated and people do not give it the love that it should be getting? Um, let's see. I'm going to go with the stuff. Stuff is a great one. Yeah, I don't think a lot of people know that one. And that film was actually a, a, a good inspiration for what we did with Big Brood. Um, so the stuff I always thought was a fun horror comedy that people don't really know or if they do see it and they watch like the first like 10 15 minutes and they're like what is this and yeah. I, <laughs> you gotta sit through the whole thing and just enjoy it for what it is and it's absolutely a beautiful film yeah, i remember watching it it would come on like there were, uh, every saturday they would have there would show random horror movies on like regular tv and yeah. the stuff would be in the rotation quite a bit and i used to love watching this stuff growing yeah. up uh, number two, who is your, okay, outside, I'm taking Ash from Evil Dead out. Who is your favorite final guy of all time? It's uh, a very, very good question. I'm, I'm drawing a, a blank on his name. Uh, the, the guy from uh, Dead Alive. Oh, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. That's a good one. Yeah. That's a good one. That is, I absolutely love the whole ending sequence with the lawnmower and everything yes. else. Always stuck with me since I've seen it, and I, I think he makes a fantastic end guy. No one said that. I Even while I was doing my top five favorite, fi I did the top five favorite final guys. I didn't even, that didn't even pop my head. That's a good one. Yeah. Um, I can't think of his name, but he is fantastic. I haven't yes. seen it in such a long time, but it stuck with me. And since I've done my top five, I actually have a new number one that's not Ash, and it's Nicolas Cage. I don't know his character name, but Nicolas Cage character from Mandy. Nicolas yeah. Cage character from Mandy was amazing. Yeah. I love everything Nicolas Cage is in. But um, number three, the final one, man. Jason Michael Myers. Who's your favorite and why? Jason. Why Jason? I enjoy those films so much more. I don't know if it's really? I like him or the character, but I love the campiness of all of the movies in the 80s. I, I, 
I enjoy that setting and that campiness. I, I feel Michael Myers is a lot more serious. And the yeah. Jason is, is not as serious. And that tone speaks to me a lot more. See, see, I listen, Halloween has a lot of bad movies in that. Mm. God knows how many uh, different areas it was going. But like, I do prefer Halloween movies more so than Jason. And I love Jason as a character. Jason mm-hmm. is an amazing character. But a lot of those movies kind of just run on and are the same thing. I mean, you yeah. do have part four, part six, part four and part six in the original series definitely are stood out and they were definitely oh, my favorites. I but, just like how ridiculous they all are. I could, I could sit there and just, just watch them and like watching part three and just seeing the 3D effects, which are obviously on the strings and everything. Like, to me, that it is because I absolutely love independent horror films. So to me, it's like mm-hmm. I've seen so many independent horror films but better than that. And just to see that lets me know that I'm on a right path. I could do a little bit better than that. So I, I love seeing that stuff, and I, I love the campiness that they have. I, they're not as good as movies, but they're more enjoyable for me to watch. Now, now did you grow up watching the Full Moon movies? Yeah, oh yeah. I love those. I Big love Full Moon. Yeah. I love them. Puppet Master, Demonic Toy, Doll Man. I mean, Basket Subs- Case. Subspecies films, all that stuff. Subspecies? Yeah. Oh, I mean... Now their their newer stuff is is fun like I'm Ginger Dead Man and Evil Bong but like I feel like they've kind of I feel like there's more indie horror filmmakers out there so the quality their Full Moon's quality has kind of took a dip yeah. but it's still fun to watch though. Oh yeah, for sure. There's so there's Matt. Still, yeah. mm-hmm. no, so uh, there's just so many more people out there doing things and making films is so much easier and accessible. I started making films back in 2007 was my first movie and just watching how the the market and and people getting into filmmaking has grown from 2007 to today is crazy. It's it's definitely been a a boom. It has been and it's been worldwide like I mean I've interviewed indie horror filmmakers from anywhere from Germany to Spain and it seems like the whole world is jumping into the indie horror and 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 putting their own little spice on their things, and it's it's absolutely fucking amazing. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's fucking crazy. amazing. I absolutely love it. I just love seeing people, and I love that there's platforms like Tubi right now that people get things on, and it's so much easier for them to get their films out to people and make money at the same time, which is is it's great. And and as a and as a horror fan, just an audience, I mean, Tubi is absolutely, if you're a horror fan and you don't know where Tubi is and you're not on Tubi, like, Tubi has so many gems. I mean, stuff from the 70s, 80s, all the way till now. I mean, it's, and it's free too. Yeah. I mean, it's a perfect platform for people. And that revenue is a lot better for filmmakers that can they add revenue versus like download and stuff like that off Amazon. It's extremely better revenue for us. So I'm a fan now, of that. Now, do, do you think Tubi is going to remain free or do you think eventually they're going to start charging memberships uh, like everybody else is doing? I think they probably keep on the free route for a while. I mean, I think they're getting enough money making all the ad revenue stuff. So I think that's what route you see maybe a lot of other people go to. Mm-hmm. And I, I mean, I hope so. I, I, know, I know that Fox purchased them. But um, and it was a rumor that they were going to come out with a membership next year, but they denounced that. So I mean, I hope it's. I don't mind. Listen, yeah, and they got to be making tons of money off their ads because those ads are long, but yeah. they're not, not long enough where it discourages you from watching the movies. No. And I don't mind ads, to be honest. I mean, I, but at the same time, I grew up in the eighties and nineties, so like I'm yeah. used to commercials and. And and the best part is like the the TV commercials don't come on like watching movies like horror movies back in the day on TV, the ads would come on at the worst fucking times and like right. it killed the suspense of what what was about to happen when it came back on. TV Dubbing does a great job, and I don't know if the filmmakers have an option. Yeah, so when you upload your, your movies to Tubi and stuff like that, you have an option to put in chapter breaks. 
and the chapter okay. breaks are where they select to put their their commercials. So you could kind of pace it out like, all right, this is a good you know spot to put that in or this in this in here. So you give them suggestions and they go based off those suggestions. And it, and it's perfect because it doesn't kill that atmosphere or what happened in that last scene before the commercial. And it's great that there's also unlike TV, the stuff's uncut. So yes. that is that's amazing. You could actually watch the movies as they intended to be. If you want to see perfect. blood, guts, tits, yeah. and ass, it's right there for you. That it is. Yeah. <laughs> Matt, where can everyone find you, my friend? Uh, well, you can check us on our website. We sell all of our movies on there, madangelfilms.com. Uh, same thing on Facebook under Manager Films, Instagram, Manager Films, uh, Twitter, X, whatever it is, Manager Films. That's where we're at. Everyone, please check my man out, Matt, on his websites, as well as keep an eye out for Big Brood. It's going to be coming on streaming services soon. Yes. As well as, what do you think about next year, Graveyard Shark? Graveyard Shark will be out, uh, we'll premiere it in June or July of next year. Uh, we just got, like I said, the ending of the film come May, because it's where we're at right now. We're winter, we've got snow, it doesn't match what we shot. So yeah. we the, it goes away right now, so we'll finish up filming in May. I've, right now, I'm editing it right now, so it's just plopping that in. We'll be good to go by June or July. Awesome, awesome. And yeah, I would love to have you back on when that comes out, man. We can talk about Figure Shark. It looks amazing. It looks like right up my alley, man. It looks like oh, that no. good old B-movie, good time, man. I, that's what it is. What it's aiming for. It's a fun film and uh, it's hilarious. I find it funny. Uh, we had a great fun time filming it, and I think fans will see that and fans will enjoy it. My man, my man. All right, everyone. Well, thank you for coming to the horror room. I'm Travis Bruce. I'll see you guys next time. Take care. <laughs>